Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. Tangent x equals 3 times cosine x and we're supposed to find sine of x. So I'll be presenting two methods, even though the methods are similar, they're kind of different as well. So, the first method is going to involve writing the tangent x as sine x over cosine x. So this is the first method. And then using cross multiplication. Obviously, we have to be careful about not making this undefined. So cosine x should not equal 0. And obviously, if cosine x is equal to 0, this will not be satisfied because tangent and cosine can't be 0 at the same time, obviously. So from here, we get sine x equals 3 cosine squared x. Now, this equation can be handled by using uh, the famous Pythagorean theorem or the formula or the identity, whatever we're going to call that. But that formula is very, very important in trigonometry. If you're dealing with trigonometry, you definitely have to know this. That sine squared x plus cosine squared x is always equal to 1. Now here, this allows us to write cosine squared in terms of sine squared. So cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. And now we can do the substitution here. So let's replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared of x and then distribute now at this point obviously you want to solve for sine x and the question is asking for sine x so that kind of makes sense if we find sine of x then we answer the question so let's go ahead and uh, make substitution again you you can probably tell that the substitution is super duper helpful in many cases now i'm going to replace sine of x with s so we don't have to write this every time so s equals 3 minus 3s squared and let's put everything on the same side so we get 3s squared plus s minus 3 is equal to 0. So this is a quadratic equation and we can easily solve it by using the quadratic formula or we can try factoring as well if it's factorable. I don't think it's factorable. So let's go ahead and just, uh, you know, you use the quadratic formula. Okay. If you use the quadratic formula, s is what we're looking for. Remember, s is equal to sine of x. So s equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times c. c in this case is negative 3, so the product of two negatives is going to give us a positive quantity, which means we're going to have real solutions. And obviously that's a known fact that in a quadratic equation, if a and c have different signs, like one is positive, the other one is negative, then you will always have real solutions. Okay. If you simplify this, we're going to be getting sine x from here. So s equals negative 1 plus minus. Inside the radical, we have 4 times 3 times 3, which uh, happens to be positive. And that is going to be, you know, 9 times 4, which is 36. And you add the 1, you get 37 inside the radical. So we get square root of 37. One thing to remember here is that the square root of 37 is greater than the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. Okay, great. So this quantity is greater than 6. Now, why am I talking about it? Because when we split it up into two pieces, we have to make sure that the sine x values, which is s, are valid. Because as you know, in the real world, sine x needs to be between negative 1 and positive 1, inclusive both, right? Okay, so it's on an open closed interval. I mean, on a closed interval. That's what I meant to say. So if you write these separately, one of them is going to give you negative 1 minus square root of 37 over 6 and the other solution is going to give you negative 1 plus the square root of 37 over 6. Now here's one thing to keep in mind that this quantity is greater than 6 so its opposite is going to be less than negative 6 so negative 6 something less than negative 6 divided by 6 is going to be less than negative 1 so this quantity is obviously less than negative 1 and subtracti subtracting another one makes it even less uh, even smaller, but that doesn't matter. We know that this quantity is less than negative 1. So it doesn't count because sine of uh, x cannot be less than negative 1. Okay, uh, due to the fact that sine x needs to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Okay, so this solution is not valid. We end up with the other solution. Is that, equ uh, is that solution okay? Let's check. Well, square root of 37 is greater than 6. When you subtract 1 from it, you're going to get something obviously less than 6. Why? Because uh, that is pretty close to 6. 
you know, uh, obviously, because the square root of 49 is 7, so it's pretty close to 6. And when you subtract 1, which is an integer, it's going to definitely going to bring it down to, you know, 5 point something. I don't know what it is, but you can evaluate it. So this is a valid solution. So from here, sine x happens to be, and I can write the radical 7 first, I mean radical 37 first, minus 1 divided by 6. We're not looking for x, so if we were, then we could say something like the inverse sine of this number, but that's not what we're interested in. We're interested in finding sine of x, and that happens to be the solution or the answer. Okay, let's take a look at the second solution. Now, the second method, I meant, not the second solution. The second method is very similar because it is going to be turned out to be the same thing, but the starting method is kind of different. Uh, so we're going to draw a right triangle that satisfies this property. So suppose this is angle X, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So I'm going to be writing the values of sine, cosine, x, uh, you know, sine, cosine, and tangent from here. I can easily write that. What happens if x is not acute? That's okay, too. You can also do the same thing on the unit circle where a, b uh, are coordinates instead of lengths. Okay? Yeah, that allows us to extend this to angles greater than 90 degrees. But anyways, so we have the equation tangent x equals 3 cosine x. So from here, we can write the tangent x as a over b. And then cosine x can be written as b over c, as you know, by using the definitions of these trigonometric functions, uh, we can express them as ratios. Now, this gives us um, something. What does it give us? Uh, well, let's simplify this a little bit. If you do cross multiplication, uh, you're going to get something like ac equals 3b squared. Now, this is a single equation, and I have three variables, so it's not really going to lead anywhere. That's going to be help. That's going to help me. And we're looking for sine x, so we're looking for a over c here, but you can't really find it directly from here. So we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. And remember, in our first method, we also used it, uh, the trigonometric version of that. But this time, we're going to use it like this. We know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, thanks to, uh, thanks to Pythagoras and his friends. Uh, and we can easily, uh, you know, substitute this into our equation. But how do you substitute this, right? Well, from the uh, first equation, we know that b squared can be written as ac over 3. So I can just go ahead and make a substitution here, replace b squared with ac over 3. The reason why I replace b squared with something is because I'm trying to find sine of x, and sine of x can be written as, in this right triangle, of course, a over c. Since I want to find a over c, I don't really care about b. Okay. To be or not to be. That is the problem. So b squared we're replacing with ac over 3 and we get this interesting equation. At least we have two variables and we're not looking for numerical values of a and c but more like a ratio. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by 3 to clean it up a little bit. This is going to give us 3a squared plus ac is equal to 3c squared. And then we can just go ahead and put everything on the same side. 3a squared plus ac minus 3c squared equals 0. Obviously, I can manipulate this, complete the quadratic or complete the square, so on and so forth. But I would like to use the, the method that we commonly use. Uh, I'm going to divide first uh, both sides by c squared. So the reason being c does not equal 0, obviously, right? Cosine cannot be 0. We talked about that. So if you divide both sides by uh, c squared, you get 3 times a squared over c squared. Uh, AC uh, divided by C squared, it just becomes A over C, and this becomes a negative 3. So you kind of get a quadratic equation, and if you call A over C, which is sine X, by the way, if you call that S, you arrive at the exact same quadratic equation that we had before, and obviously the solutions are going to be exactly the same as before. So the answer is square root of 37 minus 1 over 6, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.